home and it ended up being 26 k's three hours <laughs> my longest run ever i used to run half marathons before i got sick with long COVID and chronic fatigue syndrome probably my last half marathon was like in 2019 and then 2020 i got sick but yeah i've never gotten back into running long distances so this is my first time running a half marathon and it's longer i've never run longer than a half marathon before so it's incredible what's possible so something i want to talk about today is about not giving up at the first sign of discomfort and the runner's high <laughs> so this morning i woke up decided i wanted to go explore where i'm staying and go look for the ocean and get some exercise and like three kilometers in i was feeling three to four kilometers in i was feeling pretty tired my mind was starting to say you need to stop you need to go get some food you know we were kind of low on carbs low on energy and then i looked around me and there was nobody nowhere to go so i was just like i'll just keep lap going eight six forty oh there we go lap eight so i'll just keep going until the opportunity presents itself and then i get to kilometer six seven eight and my whole energy just shifts the next thing the moment's just a lot brighter i'm enjoying what i'm doing that kind of low energy feeling shifted and i didn't even have anything that um spiked it so I guess what I just wanted to talk about was like things shift without you even making it happen if you just maybe don't believe your thoughts at the first the first thoughts that come into your mind right I was kind of reminding myself that's just a belief right that I I'm feeling I'm feeling how I'm feeling now and I believe that I need carbs or whatever for fuel and sure there's some truth to that but the reason I'm recording this is because it was quite incredible for me to just see how just kind of carrying on and uh, going with the flow, you might say. Things just shifted, right? So often we try to control our circumstances, our environment too much, I feel. We believe like, if I'm feeling this way, I need to manage my feelings or everything like that where it's just for me like not resisting the moment is what it always comes back to it's like in the moment I'm out on a run and I'll just continue and then yeah then the endorphins really do kick in I mean that's the runner's high effect I think is that uh, just being out in nature as well you get energy from different things right the next thing I'm running through a beautiful forest and I'm just really enjoying it so yeah I mean I don't know this is helpful to whatever your situation is but I think you can apply this to anything really if you're out and you're feeling this like energetic drain I often do something that does help like I've also had times where I'm actually like really low blood sugar and getting something to eat really boosted my mood but it's like a 50 50 rule so what Josh Putnam uh, kind of somebody I've spoken to before on the channel awakening guy and uh, I love it when we spoke once, you spoke about the 50-50 rule, that, you know, one time you do one thing your mind thinks and the other time you do the other, and it doesn't actually matter, you're not going to get it, there is no getting it right or wrong, there's just different experiences really, you know, so if you're wondering, should I do this or should I do that, should I stop and get something to eat while I'm running in this situation, or should I just carry on, and you just do one, and then you see, but it's not like there's a hard and fast rule to get things right. That's the, that's the problem of the matter right there, is trying to get things right all the time. And yeah, for me, just like not believing entirely your, uh, your thoughts or what your mind is saying all the time. It's a balance, right? Often I go running and I, because I'm feeling uncomfortable like that, I'll just push myself too hard, right? I'll start running faster and faster just to kind of push myself into the pain. But yeah, I feel like this approach is actually a lot better because that's still actually a reaction to what you're feeling in the moment. 
in some ways. Again, 50-50 rules, do it one time, next time just carry on at an easy pace and do what you're doing. Again, you can apply this, this doesn't only apply to running, <laughs> I feel like. Um, yeah, so like, for me that running, pushing myself extra hard is actually trying to get away from something often, you know? And it sometimes works, but I guess the perspective today was just like running at an easy, enjoyable pace. Even if it didn't feel enjoyable at first, knowing that it's probably good for me. And uh, okay, now I've gone in the wrong direction. I'm really trying to find the ocean here, but I, I keep coming to like ports and shit. So, so we will continue on our run and uh, check out my Instagram or my Strava if you want to see how far I end up going. All right, all the best and uh, wish me luck in finding the ocean. Last little scene. So I've been running for, oh shit. I've been running for 14.3 kilometers and I still haven't found the ocean. It's quite nice. But my phone has got 4% and I'm 14 k's from home in a town that I don't know. So I need to see if I can <laughs> find my way back home. My watch is probably about to die. I feel like I'm so fucking close, but every single road I go down, it either is a dead end, yeah, it's mostly a dead end, like a shipping yard where you can't pass through. Or now I was following a railway line and I, I thought I was on the right path. And I, yeah, came to this kind of dead end of trees. I wanted to see if I could force my way through here. Yeah? I don't think so. So anyways, today was meant to be a short, maybe 5k run down to find some ocean views. And I'm probably going to end up doing like a 30 kilometer run on a cup of coffee and three three dates that's all I had today <laughs> and I feel great I, mean, I can feel the train I can feel I'm a bit tired okay my phone's about to die I gotta go I'll record something when I get home peace all right so I'm back from my run and I wanted to do a little bit of a yeah because my phone died while I was out there so I was kind of enjoying recording some stuff while I was out there and then I think I got to like the, fuck, I can't even remember where my phone died. I think it was like the 12, no, nah, it was even before that. It was around 11, yeah, it was around 11, 12K as my phone died, so I couldn't record anything anymore. And yeah, the last thing I said was I was looking for the ocean and I never found it. I got to like, um, like 30, I got to like 14, 15, 15-ish Ks and I just realized that basically the roads that I were following just kept on ending in dead ends and ports and that kind of stuff so anyways I um it's funny actually exploring how things shifted so the last bit I recorded I was talking about how the kind of runner's high hit like I was just feeling this phase where I felt like I could run forever um and the crazy thing was I literally had barely any fuel for this run so I woke up I had a cup of coffee I had some dates. I took four dates with me on the run because I was like, I didn't have any breakfast, uh, which probably wasn't the greatest idea, but I honestly wasn't planning on doing my longest run ever, which is what it ended up being. And yeah, I basically hit that phase from like three to four Ks where I was feeling a bit shit. And then from like seven to 15 Ks, I was feeling great. And then I think it all just started to hit. Like, I think I got really dehydrated because I had no water. I <laughs> was obviously um, hit like a wall with food as well. And uh, yeah, also just like the turning points. But it was fucking fun. Like, that was fun to explore as well. But I could just feel like, uh, yeah, I was walking a lot more. And actually, I felt more comfortable running at a decent pace. Like, I would run for like at seven, six, seven minutes a K and that was quite, then I would just keep on dropping back into a walk and then I'll go for three periods where I'd run at like five, 10, five, 20 a K and I actually felt more comfortable. But yeah, then eventually around the, I was like, I desperately wanted something to drink and then around the, well, I'll check the rain, yeah. Such a nice 
view actually. You can actually talk here, that's more fun. Then around the 23k mark, I found, uh, I was basically back home almost, it was like three more k's home. And I finally found the first supermarket in ages and I just went crazy with buying stuff there. Uh, basically, I just needed some carbs and I needed some hydration. So I got like a bunch of fruit juices basically because I, I needed something refreshing and uh, Fucking delicious. It's like grapefruit juice or something. I don't know, it's all in German. Um, and yeah, then I got that, had some food, and then just carried on. It was a bit difficult because I had a lot of food and I didn't want to eat it all then. But I was just refilled a bit, and then I, uh, I got home, and it ended up being 26Ks, three hours, <laughs> my longest run ever. My first time running a half marathon in. Uh, I used to run half marathons before I got sick with long COVID and chronic fatigue syndrome. So probably my last half marathon was like in 2019 and then 2020 I got sick and then I got big into cycling once I recovered and worked through all of my nervous system and health issues. And, um, but yeah, I've never gotten back into running long distances. So this is my first time running, uh, a half marathon and it's longer. I've never run longer than a half marathon before. So it's incredible what's possible when you're no longer reflecting constantly on what you're doing. Like I was really just being very present. Um, yeah, just kind of going with the flow of things and feeling into, the thing is this can be misleading talking about presence and all of that, of like something you need to actively do, where it's more just like a letting go of a need to do anything with the mind and just lose myself in the experience of running, whether that's pain in the legs whether that's stopping and walking, whether that's admiring the scenery. It's just like a natural flow, really. And I came across some really interesting spaces. Like on my way back, I ended up running past this like forest area, but I saw there was loads of cars parked there. So I went down there and there was this whole festival happening around like middle-aged, not middle-aged as in middle-aged people, but like the middle ages, like people dressed up in all these like Viking and it was crazy and then there was like music and honestly and I was kind of just dehydrated and delirious I thought I was on like it was just crazy how like sober reality I was like tripping on I was like what is actually going on here like honestly obviously I wasn't actually fitting like I was um tripping or anything but it was just incredible I was like you just enter this completely alternate universe where yeah I'm on this like crazy long run and the next thing I'm in this like middle ages um people dressed up <laughs> it's like knights and stuff and then all these like tents and it was like this whole festival and i wanted to go and see if i could get some food there because this was after i hit the wall at like 17ks where from 17ks onwards it was a real struggle uh struggle like it was fine but i could just feel i didn't have the same energy to keep running as i had had at certain points i feel like that was where i hit my wall was at 17ks and um yeah, it was just such a funny space to enter into. So anyways, that's the outro for my running vlog. And I will post something next time I do a crazy adventure like that. All right, all the best.